Welcome back, everyone, to GB Sports TV folks. Let's dive into what has been an eventful but ultimately challenging tenure for Eric Ten Hag at Manchester United. Now, Ten Hag joined the club back in April 2022, coming off an impressive run with Ajax in the Netherlands. United brought him in hoping he'd bring back a disciplined, possession-based style of play and, most importantly, restore that winning culture that's been missing since the days of Sir Alex Ferguson. In his first season, there were glimpses of hope. He led United to the Carabao Cup in 2023, breaking a six-year drought without a trophy. That win was a big deal, like a breath of fresh air for United fans, who thought, all right, maybe we're back. And he wasn't done yet. The next season, he added an FA Cup win to his resume. These achievements briefly had the fans and the board on his side, giving hope that Ten Hag was the one who could rebuild United. But, as we saw, his journey wasn't all smooth sailing. Ten Hag brought a structured, disciplined style, and while that approach worked for Ajax, he faced a lot of resistance at United. First, there was the high-profile clash with Cristiano Ronaldo, which ended with Ronaldo leaving the club. Then there were disciplinary issues with Jadon Sancho, who also ended up out of the squad. These internal challenges affected the team's morale and consistency, and in a league as competitive as the Premier League, consistency is everything. Despite these challenges, United's ownership still stood by him. They believed his methods would work in the long term, and there were moments when it looked like he might turn things around. But then came this 2024-25 season. Only one win in the first eight games, losses to Brighton, Liverpool, Tottenham, and the latest to West Ham. It's been United's worst ever start in Premier League history, leaving them 14th in the table. At that point, even the board's patience had run thin. And on October 28, 2024, it was officially over. United released a statement thanking Ten Hag for his service, announcing Ruud van Nistelrooy as interim coach while they search for a permanent replacement. So where does this leave Ten Hag's legacy at United? On one hand, he'll be remembered for his early wins and his dedication to developing young talent like Kobe Mainu and Alejandro Garnacho. But his inability to deliver consistently in the league and the very public issues with key players cast a shadow over his tenure. It's like United is back at square one, looking for stability in a post-Ferguson world. Now, as they start the hunt for yet another manager, the question remains, can United ever find someone who'll be given the time and trust like Sir Alex once had? Or are we stuck in this cycle of constant change? Let us know what you think. Is it the manager? Or is it something deeper? Now let us assume coaching has certain problems here we discuss on individually on player we need to talk about the state of Manchester United after this recent 2-1 loss to West Ham. There's a lot to unpack here, but let's start with the missed chances and that unseriousness we saw from some of our top players. We're talking about guys like Dallo, Garnacho, and Rashford, players who, on a good day, can be game changers. But this wasn't that day. Dallo, who usually brings some stability in defense, just didn't seem sharp. His forward runs lacked purpose, and he wasn't offering the kind of support United needed. Garnacho, full of talent and flair, was unable to capitalize on his opportunities. And Rashford, he struggled to find the space, the timing, the rhythm that makes him so dangerous when he's on form. The missed chances from these players summed up a larger issue. There's no one stepping up to change the game in United's favor when the pressure is on. But we do have to give credit where it's due. Kobe Mainu. This young man was a breath of fresh air, working hard in midfield, breaking up plays, and showing real composure. Bruno Fernandes, as always, was running non-stop, trying to create something out of nothing. And Andre Onana, despite conceding twice, made some critical saves that kept United in the match longer than their performance deserved. These guys showed heart, and that's what United needs more of if they want to bounce back. Now, let's address the elephant in the room. It's been 11 years since Manchester United last won the Premier League. 7. Whole. Years. Compare that to the era of Sir Alex Ferguson, who built a dynasty over 26 years, becoming a symbol of patience and vision. He had time to fail, learn, and rebuild. But that's not the reality today. In the modern game, managers like Eric Ten Hag don't get that kind of time. Just look at his short tenure, barely two seasons, and he's already out the door. Ferguson wasn't successful overnight. Early on, he struggled and faced pressure, but he was given the time to develop a long-term vision for the club. Today, it's a revolving door of managers, and no one has the chance to fully implement a philosophy before they are let go. It raises the question, are Manchester United's problems deeper than the manager? Until the club invests in stability and supports a long-term strategy, we might see the same cycle repeating. 
United fans want to see the fire and consistency of the old days, but without a Ferguson-like vision and patience, it's hard to imagine United returning to that level anytime soon. So, is the problem with the managers or with the system? That is all in Manchester United all right. Let's get into the big news. Mario Balotelli is back in Serie A. Genoa has just announced the signing of the 33-year-old Italian striker, bringing one of the sport's most fascinating characters back to Italian soil. Bolatelli's signing is set up with a contract through the end of the season, and fans are already buzzing about what this could mean for Genoa. Now, let's talk about how Genoa unveiled him. They leaned into Bolatelli's unforgettable, Why Always Me? slogan in their announcement, creating a splash on social media. And in true Bolatelli style, he joined in, saying finally, as he suited up in Genoa's colors, proudly showing off that iconic number 45 jersey once again. This contract comes with some unique terms, too. Reportedly, it's worth around €300,000 for the season, with a unilateral termination clause in Genoa's favor. It gives the club a way out under certain conditions, a setup that might work well for both sides given Bolatelli's past of highs and lows. For Bolatelli, this move could be about redemption. His career has seen stints in the Premier League, League One, and even Turkey, but Italian football has always been a big part of his story. He's a former Serie A and Champions League winner, and of course, we can't forget his heroics at Euro 2012, where he played a starring role for Italy. This return to Italy represents a chance for him to rediscover his best form, and maybe, just maybe, make his way back into the national team conversation. Genoa fans will be hoping Balotelli can bring that spark, maybe bag a few goals, and help push the team up the table. But as we all know with Balotelli, you never quite know what you're going to get. Could this be his big comeback, or just another chapter in his unpredictable career? Stay tuned to GB Sports TV as we follow this story and see what the future holds for Super Mario in Genoa. Uh, quite surprised. I mean, if you saw the West Ham game yesterday, you know, I thought, you know, we made a good account of ourselves. Um, it's a results-driven business, so not surprising really in the end, but I thought we played OK yesterday. Well, I mean, he gets the club, he loves the club, he understands it. I've seen when you watch him on the sidelines, his passion, you know, his animation, yeah, really good to see. Uh, but I think as soon as that point was announced over the summer, it was always going to be the case. He was, he was the man in waiting. <laughs> not a fan of Southgate uh, myself. Potter, Graham Potter. Oh, not a fan of Potter either. Um, uh, over the summer, I even suggested Pochettino, but obviously he's gone to the States now. Uh, I think in the short term, it'll be a give him five, ten games, see how he gets on. You know, like I say, he gets the club, he's passionate. But uh, no, there's got to be a long-term solution. J Javi, is the, Javi apparently has held talks, so yeah. apparently he's on, he's on the cards. But I don't know. My, my concern is, how does Nistelrooy get our strikers banging it in? That's what he's brought into the club to do, to bring, to, to bring goals to Garnacho in Hoyland. He hasn't been able to do it as an assistant. What's going to change now? Yeah, I think it was, um, I think it was time, to be honest. Um, I, feel, I, I do feel for him a little bit, but um, performances just haven't been good enough. Um, I think the important thing is who they bring in next, obviously. Um, but yeah, I had a feeling it was going to happen this morning. Um, what do you make of Rude taking charge? I, I think it's only, I've, I've just read, it's only in the short term anyway. Um, I, I did not want them to give him the job because um, it, it would just be like it would have been with, um, with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer anyway, so we don't want that again. I, I do not want Gareth Southgate in, in charge of Manchester United. Um, watching England, you know, I know even though he's got to finals and stuff like that, the football that he plays, it just will not work at Man United. I'm, I'm a bit, like, that's what I'm a little bit worried about because even with the team he had with England, w we should have been winning them tournaments and, and he didn't, even though he got to finals and stuff like that. But it, his management style is just not what we want. I do, I do not want Southgate anywhere near Man United. Um, there's talk of Amarim. Um, I don't really know much about him. He's obviously doing all right with sporting. Um, but yeah, I, my ideal choice would probably Nagelsmann or Nagelsmann, however you pronounce it, um, but it's just whether we can get him away from the Germany national team. Hasn't come as a surprise. Um, he probably needed his one-year extension, and I can understand that. He did win two trophies, did beat City. That must count for something. And, but unfortunately, for me personally, as a match going red, I don't think he had a, a decent enough plan. For, to get the results, so it didn't come as a surprise. Listen, it's never nice to see a manager get sacked. 
However, that being said, it's been a long time coming. I was surprised with the news regime that he kept his job in the summer. I thought it had gone away with a handshake after the cup win. They gave him another go and straight from the start, I couldn't see what he was going to do differently. I think for, for whatever reason, he just struggles to, uh, to motivate the players. I just don't think the man management there, I just don't think, I don't think they want to die for him on the pitch, which I think the players need to. Like at City for Pep, like we had Klopp at Liverpool. You've got to have that fire, you've got to have that hunger, desire to, to want to die for the boss. And for whatever reason, the lads just don't seem to want to do it for Eric. Yeah, I think some of the decision making, some of the signing certainly very questionable. Um, you know, decisions, people coming in, like in midweek where he played Missouri at number 10, and you've got Ahmad, player of the month last month, on, coming on for five minutes at the end. It just doesn't make sense to me. Listen, he's United through and through. I think in US, Mr. Ratcliffe had a contingency plan that with him being on the bench, you know, that if the worst were to happen, he'd step in and take it. Listen, he can't do any worse, can he? We saw Ollie come in and take the job a couple of years ago, got off to a flying start. If I was United, I'd, I'd you know, start the process to look for a manager again, give Van Nistelrooy a go. If after 10 games, we're back to winning ways and we've got some identity, why not give it to the end of the season? And if by the end of the season, you know, we're looking more of a United team, players want to play for him, give him a couple of year contract, let, let him have a go. Uh, I'm very glad that he's been sacked because uh, we've been performing below par for a lengthy of time. And I think it's about time that uh, uh, we, we need like uh, fresh energy, a new perspective and new ideas.